hello and welcome to Tech Tools for Early Learners. I'm Janet Corder. I would love for you to connect with me either through email or on Twitter. Now, the first thing I'm going to share with you is one of my favorite apps, and it's called the Novel Effect app. You don't need this app on student devices. You can even use it on your phone. Uh, only the teacher needs this app. So what happens with the Novel Effect app is it uses invisible technology to follow along as you're reading. Now, there's several books that you can choose from. Uh, most of your kids' favorite books will be in the uh, app, but I'm going to use my favorite book, which is Giraffes Can't Dance, and I have my iPad open. And you don't need to see my iPad screen because all of the iPad does is have the sound effects that go as you're reading. So I'm going to go ahead and start my iPad. Gerald was a tall giraffe whose neck was long and slim, but his knees were awfully crooked and his legs were rather thin. He was very good at standing still and munching shoots off trees. But when he tried to run around, he buckled at the knees. Now, every year in Africa, they hold the jungle dance where every single animal turns up to skip and prance. And this year when the day arrived, poor Gerald was so sad because it, when, he, when it came to dancing, he was really very bad. The warthog started waltzing and the rhinos rock and rolled. The lions danced a tango that was elegant and bold. The chimps all did a cha-cha with a very Latin feel and eight baboons then teamed up for a splendid Scottish reel. So that's a little bit of Giraffes Can't Dance and using the Novel Effect app. Now, I had it pretty loud at the beginning, and I turned it down just so that you could hear those effects. But the kids absolutely love the Novel Effect app. Now, I also love um, online books and stories. And these became very helpful when we were um, virtual because our students, a lot of them don't have all of the books and the reading passages that we have in our classroom. So this, these websites allowed for our students to be able to read uh, while they're at home. So now you can use this site, these sites face-to-face, -face, or if you still have virtual uh, students, they work great. They're great sites to give parents to allow kids to have access to reading materials at home. So the first one is Reading Vine. <clears throat> it is free. And what I like about Reading Vine is it's for grades K through 12, but it has reading comprehension questions that go along with the reading passages. You can filter. You can filter by genre. You can filter by grade level. But it is a great site, and again, it's free. Unite for Literacy I like because it has over 400 original picture books, but a fourth of them are written in Spanish. Now, I'm going to show you Storyline Online. This is done by the Screen Actors Guild. And so these are stories that are read by actors. Now, their kids are not going to recognize all of these actors. Some of them are from my childhood, which was a long time ago. And some of them are uh, very current. But this is a free site also. And I'm going to choose one of my favorite actors, who is Angela Bassett. And she's going to read Trombone Shorty. Also, on all of these, there's a teacher's guide if you need that for reference. Welcome to Storyline Online, brought to you by the sag After Foundation. I'm Angela Bassett, and today I'm reading Trombone Shorty, written by Troy Andrews and illustrated by Brian Cole. Where you at? Where you at? We have our own way of living down here in New Orleans and our own way of talking, too. And that's what we like to say when we want. So that's a little bit of storyline online. Now, I love webcams because it allows us to bring animals into our classroom remotely. And so uh, you can also bring in events. But most of your webcams that you're going to find are going to be animals. And I have a several here that I want to share with you. 
And at the end of this session, if you're trying to take notes, don't worry about it. At the end of this session, I have access to a document that you can download that will have links to all of these resources. So the first one is the Monterey Bay Aquarium, very well known um, aquarium in California. I love the Georgia Aquarium and I'm going to actually click on that one. And we're going to look at the beluga whales. If you've never seen them at the Atlanta Aquarium, they're amazing. And you have to kind of wait and watch for them. They're, they're huge. Whoops, here, there goes one. There's his tail. Let's see if one will cross. Oh, look at that. And they are absolutely amazing. Very mesmerizing if you need to calm your kids down. Now, in the Smithsonian Zoo, they have webcams, but they have bingo cards that you can print out where students get to check when they see something. <clears throat> Yellowstone National Park has nine webcams, including Old Faithful. And Explore.org is a great website that has a very large collection of live webcams. So bring those activities, those events, those animals into your classroom by using live webcams. Now, virtual field trips, um, real field trips are probably a thing of the past for a while because of the pandemic, but we can still take our students places using virtual field trips. And Monica Burns, who on Twitter is at Class Tech Tips, says that live or pre-recorded virtual field trips can transport students to a new place, providing context for an upcoming lesson or extending or deepening a learning activity. So let's look at some of the virtual field trips that I have found. This first one is from Jennifer Hall, who is a great person with technology that you might want to follow. And she's provided a document that links to several virtual field trips. Including museums, historical sites, national parks, zoos, and aquarium. And then this around and out of this world are all space. So these are great resources for you. But there are others, whoops, and including um, by We Are Teachers, that's 25 plus amazing field trips, Good Housekeeping Magazine. Who knew that they provided 41 virtual field trips for our kids? Virtual field trips by Discovery Education, Adventures in Familyhood. And then Matt Miller, who is known as Ditch That Textbook, has 25 virtual field trips for your classroom. So when you're reading a story or a, or a book, take those kids to the setting. Or when you're studying outer space or you're studying something, try to find a virtual field trip that will go along with the content. Now, Bongo Cat, you may not have ever heard of. And to me, there's really no explanation. I'm just going to take you there. Very good for music classes, but it's also good for having our kids or helping our kids um, use their keyboard. So here's my cat, and I'm going to use these keys right up here. See, I can make him. But I can use the keyboard to switch. And I'm going to play the tambourine. And so the kids love this, but it's just fun for adults and kids. So that's Bongo Cat. It's really good, though, to help your kids learn their keyboard, but also some musical um, terms and musical instruments there. Now, I, um, I know that a lot of you are required to have flashcards or have a word wall. And making those can be a pain sometimes. So well, there is a free website that creates flashcards and word walls. And it's, here's a link to it. And when you open this up and you put your words in, it's very simple. You can pick how many words you want per page. So if you want, um, with this one's set to four, but if you need it to be larger, you also can set the print. Now there are... Um, ads. So don't worry about the ads because if your kids don't see the website. They only see what you print. So I'm going to keep it black and you have two options for your font. So if my words are dog and cat and mouse and horse and uh, rat 
And what's another animal? And we've got cow. And I come down here and I submit. Then it prints a very nice document of these words that I can easily cut out. And I have my word wall already created in a very readable format. I can also use this for flashcards. So that is um, print your own word wall or your own flashcards. Now, this is relatively new. If you do have devices that you use QR codes, it's very simple to create a QR code. And what I love about them is that they have a dinosaur on them. So I'm going to come and I'm going to go to a separate site. So I'm going to open up another tab. And let's just do ESPN.com. I want my students to go there. So I have the site pulled up. And this is part of Chrome, so you do have to be in Chrome. And I click on the site. You see how I have that highlighted. Notice when I clicked on it, this tiny little URL appeared. So I can click on that, and it automatically created a um, <clears throat> QR code that will take me to that website. Then I can download it if I want to print it out. So if I'm playing a game off of ABCU, uh, ABC uh, or any other website and that URL is extremely long all I have to do let's do that one more time is I am on the website so I'm gonna go to ESGI software if I can spell it who is hosting this wonderful event I must have had so I find my website now that QR code is not there. So you have to click on the URL and you see how that URL just immediate um, the QR code immediately appeared. There is my QR code that will take me to the ESGI website. And then I can download it or I could just put it on my screen here and my students could just scan it from there. So that is creating your own dino themed QR codes in Chrome. Now, Kittle has been around a long time. I'm a huge advocate for keeping our kids safe on the Internet, and that is very difficult to do. So if you're allowing your kids to search or they need to search for some sort of a research project, I love to use Kittle, and it is not Kittle.com. It is Kittle.co, and I'm going to show you why uh, the different reasons why I like it. I would even use this with older students, even though it is designed for the younger ones. Because if they search for something on Google, they're going to get a lot of junk of things that just will not, they're not important. They're not part of the content and sometimes inappropriate things. With Kittle, you're only getting good content that is appropriate for our students. So um, our kids love dinosaurs. I need to spell it correctly. Dinosaurs. And when I use the Kittle search engine, now from what I understand, now I'm at home, I'm not in a school building. It does have ads on it, but I have heard from teachers and when I've done this, shown this to teachers at schools, most filtering systems will cut this ad out. If it doesn't, I just teach the kids, don't worry about the gray box. You just keep on going down. And so these are accurate articles about dinosaurs. They're not going to find an article that some kid wrote that said, I went to dinosaur park and we had fun. These are actual articles they can use for research and for content. Notice they all have images, which is very good for our young students. So that's just searching the web. What if I only wanted facts? So teach your kids about these tabs right here. If I only wanted facts about dinosaurs, skip that gray box unless your filter probably will not have that, allow that on there. And so these are going to be websites of just dinosaur facts, images. Now, this is good for you as a teacher also when you're doing your presentations and you need images or you need facts and there's pages. Now, the difference is between images and K images. K images, these are copyright free. You have permission to use these. There's not going to be as many, but there's still pages of them. And then news. So what news is there recently about dinosaurs? And you can see um, four days ago, 
there was an article. Here's January 31st. So we have news articles. <clears throat> and then the last is videos. <clears throat> so these are going to be appropriate videos to show your students in class. Of course, I would always preview them because what's appropriate in a first grade class is different than what's appropriate for our seniors in high school. So these are videos. I absolutely love Kettle, though, for students of all ages and for teachers to use as a source for getting information. Now, if you have computers in the back of your room, I would put Kettle as my homepage so that students automatically go there. Uh, they need to learn that Kettle is where you want them to search. You don't want them going to Google. AutoDraw is a fun site. It's especially good for those kids who struggle with their drawing and they say, I can't draw. And I'm one of those, even though I'm not a kid, I can't draw. But whoops, if I go to AutoDraw.com, and that's my last one, so I'm going to come up here and start over. And over here on the left are my drawing tools. So it's on blue, but I'm going to click green. And you want to make sure that this pencil, the black one, the one with the stars is highlighted. Okay, you want the one with the stars that's auto draw. You can also do text and fill and shapes. But let's say um, I want to draw a dinosaur. Okay, we just did a dinosaur research. So here I go. Now I'm on a trackpad. So not only can I not draw, but I'm using a trackpad. So my drawing is terrible. Hey, this is pretty good for me, though. It's a skinny dinosaur. And notice as soon as I let go, I have all of these tiny pictures up here. And this is Google's algorithm. They're trying to determine what I am drawing, even though I am not an artist. So I can, this looks like a dinosaur here. Oh, look at that. It turned it into a dinosaur. Oh, that one. Look at that dinosaur. Some of them think it's a duck or a penguin, but I was attempting to draw a dinosaur. And so let's go back and get one of those dinosaurs, a kangaroo, from where I had another dinosaur. Um, but I just think this is an awesome tool for our students who struggle with drawing because it uses that smart technology. Also for teachers, Think about you need to make flashcards or you need to make a presentation and you want an apple and you don't want to have a bowl of apples. You just want one red apple. So I'm going to start over and I'm going to choose red and I'm going to draw my apple. Okay. And right up here, it knows what I was drawing. So you can download these under the three lines or the hamburger menu. You can download these and you could use these simple images for your flashcards or for your presentations. Um, sometimes it's so difficult to find simple clip art. So use auto draw. It's free. Now word wall. <coughs> word wall is a relatively new site. There is a free version and a paid version. The free version is great because there's several million activities, and I do mean million activities, that are available to you. It is an online game. It's wordwell.net. In the handout that I have for you, I have directions for using it. So we're going to go to one of the activities. Now, when you go to the activities, and when you're creating or you're looking for activities, there are different types. <coughs> Excuse me. It asked me for my name, which it defaulted to because I've been using it. And so this one is on more or less. And so I click. And it has a fun little game screen. Which one is more? And so down here, there are 10 questions. So if I pick five, it's correct. And I go to the next one. And if I pick one, which one is less? So I have to read those questions there. Which one is greater? I'm going to get one wrong. And it tells me which one's right. Which one is less? And so I go through this. And then at the end, I can replay. It will tell me how many I have correct and how many are incorrect. 
Also, as the teacher, it will tell me how my students have done. I'll get a report. So I'm going to close WordWall and show you the second example. <clears throat> As it loads, start. And you do want, you have the option when you're setting it up to have the students input their name. You do want them to put their name in there so that you can track them. It's also very easy to put it in Google Classroom. This one's on Pete the Cat. So I have to place, this is a drag and drop. Love the sounds. In order, and I'm not reading them. I'm just showing you what happens. And then I hit Submit Answers. I didn't do very good. <laughs> uh, I needed to read those questions. So as the student, I find out how many seconds it took me. I can show the answers. And I can play again if I want to. All right. Now, I'm going to take you to wordwall.net and show you the community of activities that are there and how you're going to use it. So I'm going to go to wordwall.net. And um, I am already logged in. Community is where you want to go. Because in the community, there are tons of resources. So if I'm doing CVC words, I just come up here and search. And these are all of the activities on CVC words. The kids love the whack-a-mole games. And you can see there are different styles of games, different templates. So I'm going to choose, um, let's choose, I love the jungle theme, organizing these CVC words. And as the teacher, I'm going to check it out and make sure that it's like I, it's what I want. Love the jungle theme. Oh, so I have to put these in the right place. So this one comes here. So we're organizing. We're dragging and dropping. Now, <clears throat> I said I love the jungle theme. There are other themes. So here's a Wild West theme. Same content but a different theme. Same exact content, different theme. <clears throat> so there are various themes down here that you can choose from. Over here are the different types of interactives. So this one is categorized, put things in a category. But I could also do random cards. I could do a random wheel. And there are other interactive activities. And if they're not, if they're grayed out, they do not work with this content. So let's say that I love this one right here. I come down here to share. This is how I get it to my students. I click on my students. And the directions are on my handout. Oh, I need to do get link. Okay, here's what I want to do. If you use Google Classroom, you can automatically put that in Google Classroom. If you don't use Google Classroom, you use Schoology, Seesaw, Canvas. <clears throat> Copy the link and place that link inside of your learning management system. You could also, though, create a QR code. So if you have this as a station, you might print this off and the kids go and they scan it if you have iPads or some sort of devices that read um, QR codes. So I love WordWall. Now, you are familiar with ESGI or you wouldn't be here today. ESGI is an amazing assessment platform. And you can do those one-on-one -on -one assessments that are so critical with our early learners uh, by using their software. So this is a link to the ESGI software website. And please make sure that you are utilizing their great materials. And they do offer free conferences and, and different activities for, for teachers. Follow them on Twitter, on Facebook, and just uh, be part of that ESGI family. Now, Confetti Confetti is a Chrome extension. Your students won't need this. This is for you, the teacher. And this is just a ton of fun. You will go and get the uh, con whoops, the Confetti app uh, extension. There's a link to it. But what happens, 
let's say it's a student's birthday or they are everybody turned in their homework or you have a new student of the week or a new student and you're in a zoom meeting or you're in class and you want to celebrate well that chrome extension there are there are um, keyboard shortcuts that will cause confetti to go across your screen so on i'm on a mac so i'm going to do the command b and it may not work because not going to work because I am in a presentation, but let me see if I minimize my screen if it'll work. There it goes. <clears throat> and so I can share my with my class a confetti cannon by just hitting that com command B. On the handout, it tells you what the different keyboard shortcuts are for whatever device you're using, whether it's Windows or Mac. So that's confetti, confetti. Now, solve emoji. If you're like me, I love these when my friends post them on Facebook or on Twitter. These are those mathematical picture problems. And the ones that are on Facebook are usually pretty difficult. But if we go to solvemoji.com, and I think this is such a good skill for our, our students. And it's also, you can... Um, differentiate your students this way because there's different levels so there's 10 levels of difficulty and there are ads but your kids aren't going to go to the website we're going to go to the junior one and i'm just going to select a difficulty level and well Maybe we'll just go to <laughs> new puzzles. It's, uh, don't want this ad. I hate ads, but I understand how people have, that's how we get free things. So let me show you where these are, if I can find one. I need to select a puzzle type. So I'm just going to do, I, that's what I missed before. And here's my easier ones. So we'll do level three. And it's generating the solve emojis. And when I'm on a recording, it is much slower. But you can print these off. You could download just that one puzzle and link it into your Google Classroom, your Schoology, your um, whatever you're using. And I guess it's just not going to load for me today. And I don't know if it's their site or my internet, but what these are, too many ads today, are those puzzles where you might have a hamburger plus a hamburger equal 10, and then a hamburger plus a hot dog equals 7. And they have to keep working those problems by using the images. And it's just not loading today, so I'm going to move forward. But check it out. I think you'll love um, having your kids use that for their math skills. Make a great center. Now, Bingo Baker has been around forever. And there is a free version. But honestly, this is one thing I would purchase. It's $24.95 for a lifetime. And I have been using this for seven or eight years, and I have never had to pay again. So bingobaker.com is an online bingo game. So if you have students with devices, they can play online. So we're going to go to bingobaker.com. I'm going to show you what it looks like. The reason you want to um, have an account is that it keeps all of your bingo games so that you can use them year after year um, or over and over. So I have my bingo, and let's just say that this bingo is going to be called, um, we're going to do colors because we're studying bingo. Now, five by five is a typical grid, but I have little bitty ones, so we're going to do three by three. So it's not going to be bingo, it's bin, but that's okay. And so I can do green, and I could do red. Don't worry about the font. Don't worry about how much text you have. It sizes that text to the square. And I have yellow, but if I have images, so I have a picture, a, a picture of yellow and a picture of red or a picture of an apple, I can put those images in also. 
and I can do uh, enlarge the text, do all kinds of stuff. So then I create my bingo. I just click generate and I have a bingo card. Now, every student, when you give them the link to the bingo game, after you click generate, will have a different card. Now, when in my account, this is why I keep, that's why I paid the $24.95 for a lifetime. All of my bingos are saved. And you see that I have them for math problems, sight words, Greek mythology, kindergarten math, Romeo and Juliet. I use Bingo Baker in high school. They love it. <clears throat> Star 2 Algebra Review. That's a test uh, that students in Texas take. <clears throat> Plants, Simple Shapes, Martin Luther King, similarly, Similes and Metaphors, Canterbury Tales. So I have all of these bingo guards already created in my account. Okay. So we're going to look at, and we're actually going to just see what bingo looks like. So if you wanted to play, you would go to bit.ly dot, uh, bit .ly slash Pete Bingo. And this one's over Pete the Cat, which is in my account. <clears throat> the students would do click generate card. And then these are the directions. They click OK. Now, every student is going to have a different card. Every student or is, will have a different card. So as the teacher, I'm going to call out things like, ooh, this is the blue cat. Um, <clears throat> this helped keep Pete the cat dry. And they mark it. They can mark the free one. So I love Bingo Baker. It's good for math problems. It's good for vocabulary. And uh, you can search for bingo cards, but I think it's just as easy to make your own. So that is BingoBaker.com. If you want to look at Pete the Cat, it will not go away. This is the link to the Pete the Cat bingo. <clears throat> now, I told you I had a handout. Here's how you're going to access that handout. It's bit.ly slash ESGI early and when you click on and I'll give you a second you may want to take a screen oops a picture of that bit.ly slash ESGI early and when you open that up you're going to have access to this PDF all of these are links they're active links so here are my virtual field trips here are the live webcams this is how we created those that word wall. Now, wordwall.net is a different site. Those are those online games. I showed you two, but here are some other. Okay. Find the match contractions, telling time, hatchet, math facts, long use sound, parts of a diagram, parts of a plant. <coughs> here is write reader. I don't think I showed you that one, but there's a few tools in here that are I threw in for extra. Kittle. Bingo Baker with directions, Bongo Cat, where that crazy cat played the bongo and other instruments, Auto Draw. Here is the Dino themed QR code generator, ESGI software, our wonderful host for today, Solve Moji, the Confetti Chrome extension, and here are the keyboard shortcuts. And I also put in favorite apps. I know all of you don't have access to iPads, but for those of you that do, these are my favorite apps for my younger students. Also, it does, it'll tell you if they're free or paid. So you do have access to this handout. If you can download it at bit.ly, ESGI early, and you'll have that handout. And um, I used um, a great website, Slides Go to for my background if you've not used slides go it has powerpoint and google slides backgrounds or, or themes that you can use and i am going to just um leave it with you i hope that you have a wonderful conference i hope that i was able to give you some tools that you can use with your students and that will make your learning engaging and will save you a little time and make things easier for you have a great school year and thanks to ESGI for sponsoring this great conference.